from Sydney, Australia. Please, Georgina. Thank you. You have the title of the study that I'll be presenting, so in the interest of time, I'll get straight into it. Uh, show. There, it's fine. So, the rationale for the combination of a BRAF and a MEK inhibitor. This is the MAP kinase pathway shown here. This is an important signal transduction uh, part of normal cells. However, in cancer, the majority of solid tumours have this constitutively and abnormally activated, constantly signalling down this pathway, making the cancer cell a cancer cell. So, a B, in, in metastatic melanoma, 50% of melanomas have a mutation in this BRAF protein, which constantly constantly signals down this pathway in an abnormal way. Dabrafenib is a BRAF inhibitor which stops that pathway. However, after about five to six months, the cells, the cancer melanoma cells get smart. And so the, the, the dabrafenib really only works for about five to seven months in the majority of patients. Think of it like a thief driving down a highway and you need to roadblock it. So they get to the roadblock by the police and they stop. But they get smart and they find a way to get back onto the highway. So you need to block the exits. And the way to do that is to combine it with trametinib, a MEK inhibitor. So this is the study design. The patients included had V600E or V600K BRAF mutant metastatic melanoma. They had had no prior BRAF or MEK inhibitor. 162 patients were included in this study and were randomised to three different arms. The first arm was dabrafenib alone. The second arm was full dose dabrafenib but a half dose of trametinib. The third arm was a full dose of dabrafenib and the full dose of trametinib. I have got the objectives of the study, the primary endpoints and secondary endpoints written there. So this is the most important slide. This is the progression-free survival in the patient population. The yellow curve is the monotherapy dabrafenib alone arm. Their median progression-free survival was 5.8 months. The green curve is the low-dose combination arm. Their median progression-free survival was 9.2 months. This was statistically significantly longer than the monotherapy arm. The third arm in orange is the full-dose combination arm. Their median progression-free survival was 9.4 months, and this was statistically significantly longer than monotherapy. In fact, the hazard ratio was 0.39 with a p-value of less than 0 0.0001. What this means in real terms is that patients on the full dose combination arm had a 61% reduction in the risk of progression and death compared to monotherapy. What's more, the landmark 12-month overall survival in the full combination group was 79%. We have never ever seen a 12-month survival of that, that level in metastatic melanoma to date. This is the confirmed response rate. Uh, if you can look at the overall response rate in the monotherapy arm, it was 54%. In the low-dose combination arm, it was 50%. It was not statistically different from the monotherapy. However, the high-dose combination arm had a response rate of 76%. So this was statistically significantly different with a p-value of 0.026. So what this means, if you're thinking of that thief down the highway, we know that just putting one roadblock but adding the exit blocks actually improves the duration of the response and the number of patients who actually respond. You can see the duration of response written there is 10.5 months for the patients on the full combination dose. And you'll notice that no patients in that full dose arm, zero, had progressive disease as their best response. These are the side effects. The first group of side effects written at the top, there's five, four of them. These are all associated with BRAF inhibitors, hyperproliferative and alopecia. You'll notice that these have decreased in the high-dose combination arm. Never ever before in the history of drug development have we combined two drugs and seen a reduction in toxicities. And these are important toxicities because these are oncogenic toxicities with the cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. 
If you look at the bottom four toxicities, from acneform rash to chorioretinopathy, these are toxicities we see with single agent trematinib, and you can see them in the combination arm. They were not increased compared to what we see with trematinib in the clinical trials of single agent. I'd like to point to two important facts on this slide. These are the other adverse events observed in the study. First of all, uh, pyrexia. This was increased in the combination arm. And secondly, nausea and vomiting was increased in the combination arm. But otherwise, all adverse events were equally distributed between the three arms, and these adverse events were easily managed. So to conclude, this is the first kinase-kinase combination to number one, show an enhanced anti-tumor activity and to reduce specific oncogenic adverse events with a biological rationale behind it. The combined treatment, prolonged progression-free survival and, prolong and improve the response rate compared with single-agent dabrafenib alone. And the profile, the safety profile, was tolerable and manageable, particularly a decrease in the cutaneous squamous cell carcinomas. There are two phase three trials in the first line setting in BRAF mutant metastatic melanoma that are ongoing. One looks at the high-dose combination versus dabrafenib alone, and the other looks at the high-dose combination versus vemorafenib alone, and they are accruing at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Long, for this 